Are you the type of person that goes to, say, like an international buffet? Something where there's lots of different options um, that are available. You just go up with your plate, grab a little nosh of this and a little taste of that, and go back to your table and just eat a ton. Well, that's kind of what this radio reminds me of. The Ratty, made by Radioddity. This is a, to call it a shortwave radio would be probably a disservice. This is actually a fairly wide-banded general coverage receiver that actually does more than radios like the C-Crane Skywave single sideband. It goes so far as to be competitive on the functional page to that of my ICOM R30, which costs six to seven times the cost of this. Does it perform as well? No. Uh, can it go as high frequency? No, and it definitely doesn't do the digital modes either. But for a receiver that kind of does everything and fits in a shirt pocket, if I had a shirt pocket, let's take a look at it. Now the Raddy being 99.99 puts it in a fairly unique place. It is cheaper than that of the C Crane Skywave SSB. Those radios perform better, but don't have the frequency space that this operates on. The fact that this goes up to ham radio 2 meter and 70 centimeter and all the way down to 520 kilohertz, which is the space where AM broadcast channels begin is pretty impressive. There are lots of little features on this, like the external antenna hookup, the size, the USB-C charging. Yeah, one of the first radios with USB-C charging. Good job, Radioddity, on doing that, while still maintaining this really kind of kitschy, classic aesthetic look to it. I mean, that's, <laughs> it, it's got very like communist block looks to it, down to even the, little springy metal belt clip. The obvious downside of this is that it can overload pretty easily. It is not as selective, which selective again is the ability for it to disregard strong adjacent signals that are off the tuned frequency. The antenna is also big problem. This thing, you're gonna, you're just gonna break this thing right off. Although it is pretty flexy. So you may be able to put a bend in it and be able to take it out. I don't know, but um, I would recommend using the external antenna where possible. But then that takes some of the novelty away because of the size of this. All right, so we have the Ratty RF760 here. It comes in a very small box. This is the uh, Skywave, C-Crane Skywave for reference. It's actually a very tiny radio. It comes with a decent amount of things that it does. I'll go ahead and dive in on that so you guys can see it. Uh, thermometer, okay. VHF, UHF, that UHF part's pretty cool. 1000 milliamp uh, battery, same battery that's in the, the Meritac County Com radios, earphones, shuttle tuning. It's got a jog wheel, new design, airband, alarm, and USB-C, which is, which is pretty cool. So, all right, let's 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 dive into this here. It is just a little guy, it sits right there on the top. You can see that, slide that to the side. What else is in the box here is a little foam bit, piece of cardboard, some instructions. The manual is, is decently sized and does explain the functions of the radio to a pretty decent degree. Pretty good there. Comes with a USB to USB-A charging cable, a tiny, a uh, shortwave antenna with a clip lead at the end, and it is a cantilever clip lead. In fact, let's just pull this stuff out so I can get the box out of the way. I'm wrestling with the box, forget about that. It's got this like cantilever clip uh, that opens up and you can, it's actually kind of a cool design. It, it opens up kind of wide, the jaws, if you can get it open. Why is it messing with me? Yeah, there you go. So the jaws are, are connected to this little cantilever arm and when you push it in. It's actually really, really tight holding. You'll probably rip the connector out before you can get this connector to disconnect. Two, uh, an earbud lead with two rubber bits for different sizes and a bag for the radio to go in. Pretty cheap bag. Anyway, about what you'd expect. Let's, let's clear the path here because you want to see the radio. All right, so the radio walking around, I said that it's kind of got 
Soviet era type looks to it. The paint job is this painted metal, the ratty logo with this crazy the Chinese quality sticker there. Buttons on the top are all screen printed buttons. There's a USB-C on the side. There is a tune dial on the, on the side as well that works okay. It's slightly detented, a bit of a detent. The battery door is rough to get out and it is that same battery that some of you like and some of you absolutely hate. So that may change your decision to buy. It is USB-C to rechargeable though, which is nice. And I will take this moment and opportunity to talk about the thing that is the glaring issue with me with this, is this uh, antenna. This is, uh, wow, this is just the, the smallest of elements here. And I don't see a way of, of replacing it easily. So uh, not a long antenna, you can see there. Pretty, it's actually, I can get it all in the video. That's how short it is. Let's see if I can zoom in on this, this top element here to give you an idea of how small this is. This is just an absolute tiny, tiny upper element. And I know I will break this. In fact, the antenna, thankfully the antenna goes directly into an antenna jack because if it was one of those clip kind, I don't even know of a clip that could do it. But anyway, neither here nor there. Okay, let's turn her on and see what's out there. This is FM broadcast, my local classical station. Sounds pretty good. All right. Volume button, volume up and down are here. All right, I'm zoomed in as close as I can right now to demonstrate this because this is gonna be really difficult otherwise. There are controls up at the top here that are very hard to see because this is, you know, this is a very small radio, palm top radio type setup here. To, to edit these, you have to click the set button and parts will flash that are under your control. So attenuation is normal. We're in de-emphasis 50. Mono is currently the mode modulation or mode as it says module there. And the bandwidth is at, um, what is that? 110 kilohertz. To set or change the settings on this, you basically will click the set button and the item will flash. And then you click the mode button and it will jump through the settings. You may be hearing this. And in fact, I'll turn it up a little bit. I'm not seeing any change here on the bandwidth. The audio quality is the same. 84, 60, 40. The fidelity of the sound is, is identical. Um, however, so bandwidth may not be that much of a use, but uh, the attenuation works pretty well. Seems like it gets an RF boost. Normal is just normal and local throttles it down even more. I'm running off of the, um, the end lead here. We have an attached antenna and you can hear it. It totally attenuated that signal. So RF gain is probably controlled. Uh, right there. So one is, let's say we want to get out of the FM space. You, you know how an FM radio works. You scroll aside here. It works. Both these up and down buttons also do that. You can change the step rate. You click the little button and the little arrow jumps there. You can see it moving around. So now we're one more. There we go. So now we can quickly jump around the band. And we'll go back to set attenuation to normal. Okay, we get it back. All right, let's get out of this band. Next band. This is your AM broadcast band. Or narcotics kingpin act by the Department of Treasury. That had never, I had never heard that before. So what does that designation do? Yeah, so that- You can see the DB jump right here, this SNR, signal to noise ratio. You can see that jumps up. Watch, I go off frequency a little bit. And it drops right down, and when I'm right on top of it, boom, comes right back in. So now we're in proper shortwave, so I will connect an antenna. So this is uh, where it gets a little bit, a little bit into the, the old way of doing things. This is a, let me get that microphone out there. So inside the shortwave setting, 
We're now on where you do everything for broadcast shortwave and amateur radio, right? This is where the scroll wheel becomes a bit of a pain. You can just go through here quickly, and we can set the step if we want to and get right to the band we're looking for in this case. We're gonna go 40 meters. Here's my, my, my larger problem that I had with this. We're getting bleed over from the adjacent AM station that we we're just listening to. The selectivity of this radio is not great. If you consider what all it's packing into this little box, again, a super, super tiny radio, then there's some selectivity issues uh, in that when I'm on an HF frequency, for instance, it wants to pull in those um, th that AM station, 640, which we just heard. Okay, now we're on single sideband. Again, I hit click, I click set until mode or module was flashing. So I've got it in LSB mode. So here we go, we're in lower sideband. Let's see if we can find somebody. All right, so I've tuned into a couple of folks having a bit of a rag chew here. And this is on 7.208. And I gotta tell you, um, I'm having a hard time copying them. Here I'm just finding the 7610, and, and as a bit of a counterpoint, uh, let's let's take them off of here. By the way, it's almost picking it up without the antenna even in there. That's part of the issue I've had with this radio is that uh, selectivity for amateur radio has, has not been very good. In fact, it seems like it has issues picking up uh, amateur radio. And it, I know it's on the right sideband because you can hear the distortion of the, of the people talking. And, and we are in LSB. For the heck of it, I put it on DX. So we'll see if we can, if that changed things with the RF game cranked. All right, here's a massive signal we're gonna go to. All right, so just so I'm, I'm being fair here, we've got it in lower sideband. Bandwidth is set to three kilohertz. We're in DX for RF gain, meaning we're... It just... It's, it sounds hard. It sounds rough on the external antenna. The signal is so loud uh, that we're hearing that I can hear it on my 7610 with the antenna switched off of it. That's how loud that signal is that's coming in. But yeah, just it's having difficulties with this one. All right, same conversation. Let's turn this guy off. Maybe we should put that on the side for a second. So as most of you know, I go straight to amateur radio for a lot of stuff. And I gave the GP5, this radio's predecessor, kind of a knock because it wasn't a very good ham radio. But um, oftentimes we need an emergency preparedness radio. And what sometimes happens, and, and I'm not trying to be an apologist for this radio here, but what sometimes happens is it will be good at a couple of things. It'll, do, it'll try to do too many things, and it won't be that good in all the things. Case in point, I don't think this is going to be a fantastic shortwave receiver. 
but this does things that, frankly, no other radios uh, that I own that are just general coverage receivers can do. The fact that this goes to ultra high frequency is crazy to me. So why don't we keep playing around and we'll forego the shortwave for a little while and I'll show you the rest here. What's next? VHF. Let's see, are we on? Yes. So um, <laughs> being that this is VHF, UHF, we're on the VHF right now. It generally runs in FM mode when you're here. So we can go up. And in fact, I'm going to step up Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Test, 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 test. So you get the idea. Works all right there. Now, a bit of a fun fact. It is smart enough to know when the antenna is external or not. It will remove the antenna marking from it and actually change sounds like the gain a bit and then it goes back up to external so it, it does know more quirks that i'm figuring out as we're doing this live all right let me turn this down a little bit so i have the external conne uh, antenna connected this is a hf antenna basically uh, but we're trying to get the weather service and it just says external antenna and it's extremely extremely loud and watch what happens when i remove it Perfect. Surf heights two to four feet. Thunderstorm potential none expected. So there's something going on with this external antenna and this. It, it doesn't like it. There's something. There's something that makes it unhappy. And if I put the antenna up, it gets even better signal. Now it's, it's probably worth showing this as well. Is that the size difference between these radios is 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 pretty is pretty large. The Skywave is, is, is much bigger, right? GP7 is as well. The, the Ratty is, is really quite thin. You can see that up against this and, and appreciate the GP7 is in a silicone cover right now or housing and, and it's, it's pretty small. So this is one of those radios that you could just kind of pack away wherever you go and be able to listen. Likely, m most likely, to local FM and AM stations. And of course you get VHF, UHF, and even CB with this, which is kind of cool. There's quirky little features here and there baked inside of it. The menu system or the access, the way you access and work through the radio is, is a bit, it's a bit tiresome. It's not intuitive in its use, uh, unlike things, probably the Skywave is probably the most intuitive um, than the GP7 and then the Ratty. The Ratty does things and, and jumps around on you, things like setting the step for where you're tuning the frequency. Having no keyboard or no key input makes it difficult, but you can expect that because they're, it's small, right? If you added a key, it would make it much bigger. All in all, I feel like it's you wouldn't be buying this for the shortwave functionality. You'd be buying this for kind of a backup AM, FM radio, something that you'd put in your pocket, put it in a backpack, take on the go with you and have it wherever you were. I think it gets extra points for having the ability to do uh, VHF, UHF, as well as the CB for whatever novelty you feel that might be, but that's worth something to some of you. So yeah, there you go. That's what I got for the tabletop. Uh, USB-C is nice. What radios need this? While I was editing this video, I realized I made a, maybe I made a misstep. This is such a small radio and it's seemingly has a lot crammed into it. Um, I only tested the external speaker. We didn't test the headphone jack. So allow me to rectify that now. I have my audio recorder here and I'm tapped into it with some cans. I am going to plug in there and plug in my antenna. I have this set for 10 meters right now, this antenna. And sounds beautiful. So we already knew that FM worked okay. My curiosity. Let's get into HF. Canyon will live in infamy as a step backward for women's rights and human rights. Because most Americans believe that it's... It's quiet. But it's, it's there. With the external uh, headset connection or speaker. I think we're just getting washed out with, with the muddy speaker.
Yeah, hundred percent. You can hear that how muddy it is. Much better. Much better. Not great, but much better than the um, the speaker. Now, why? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, why does this sound so good? It sounds good on the FM broadcast, AM broadcast. Okay, doesn't sound so great in single sideband mode. So whatever. So let's let's flip this over. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the antenna up here. So we're we're going up in frequency. Let's let's get up into that. Uh, let's go and bring it into CB now. There we go. And let's do a band scan again. Because we're now on 10 meters, the antenna's on 10 meters, which for a receiver should be fine for CB. Let's see if we can find somebody in there. I will note, this takes a long time to do a scan. This is just one band and we haven't even got to 28 megahertz yet. So we'll, we'll see. It sounds like 24 stations or something like that, but um, I'm not expecting a lot. We got it! The downside of this CB mode is it only does FM and AM. It doesn't do single sideband, FYI. Now the other nut I couldn't crack was getting airband to work successfully on this, but I'm wondering if it's the same kind of audio problem. So we're back on the airband, I'm scanning the band, AM is the mode for airband, for those that don't know. And so we're going through it. It's found two channels, which generally could mean noise or it could be actual people talking. I live on a flight path between basically all the other states and LAX. And there's also a municipal airport, Fullerton Airport, right down the street. So we should get some activity here. And uh, hopefully it'll sound all right. So I... We are breaking squelch with something, and it does, it does sound like actual <laughs> humans talking versus just uh, the AM radio that's, that's bleeding over. It's a little rough, but it's in there. So I have a feeling that the speaker is potentially interfering with the receiver or something along those lines. When you, when you volume up to the degree you need to be able to hear something on the speaker, it seems like it's killing the front end of the radio or something like that. I, I, I could be wrong. I, I'm, not, I'm not really going to do a deeper dive on it, but when you get it on headphones, which is generally the case, generally if you put headphones on a shortwave radio, they're going to sound a lot better, including your ham radio station, of course. I'm assuming you all know this, of course, right? Hey! Those were human beings. Okay, I think that that's good enough. That was a proof of concept, at least for me, to know that when possible, please run this on some kind of audio path that doesn't require the speaker. I think that's gonna that's gonna do a lot better for you. So good. Okay, I can I can step away now. Ready? You're okay. You're okay, ready. I am immediately torn on giving this a would I buy it. Uh, there are some folks that this is uh, probably a slam dunk. If you want the size a little bit bigger than the Belka DX, a, another shortwave radio that I reviewed, and you want all those extra bands of operation that the Belka doesn't do, the Belka is straight up shortwave, will not do medium wave, will not do FM broadcast, and then certainly won't do any of the higher frequencies like this does. Uh, this is probably for you. This is definitely in the wheelhouse. For 99 bucks, it's also cheaper than the Belka DX. Not as good a performer, straight up. I'll just say that right up front. This is not as good a performer. This could be a good preparedness radio, a good bug out radio, because you can get analog VHF UHF with this, which is really, really nice, as well as picking up broadcast FM and broadcast AM. It seems to do perfectly fine for local signals, again, broadcast FM, local stuff, and some um, AM DX, but it pulls in the local AM stations just fine. Now, it's obviously not all roses. I covered some negative things. I also discovered that the bandwidth was a bit sporadic in bandwidth control. It's really nice to be able to it, to slide up and down bandwidth for AM stations, particularly when you're trying to pull DX stations out. Also, I found the 2.2 kilohertz bandwidth that they gave for amateur radio was a bit of a head scratcher. I don't really understand that. It's kind of like 2.4, and then you can go up from there to like 3 
okay, um, you know, and, and then down, but kind of 2400 is the sweet spot, at least from my point of view. 2.2 made the, the audio a bit weird. Now, uh, also, this doesn't have any built-in Morse code modes. This does go down to 500 hertz, but uh, that itself was kind of a weird didn't work all the time, and the fact that short wave or single sideband implied upper sideband while there was a, also a second lower sideband option, the interface was a bit clunky. Um, but, again, uh, it, it's kind of got the look and feel of those old school short wave radios, and, and for that, it, it fits the mark of being an upgrade to something like that, so it might scratch the itch for some of you that like the older look of some of the radios that are like this, but want the it added features of USB-C lithium ion battery, among some other interesting little features. Now, this is a review radio that was sent to me by Radiodity. Thank you for sending it. I do appreciate taking to, taking a look at, at quirky radios. And and I think this one it, it fits that bill. At, at the price point, it's uh it's not a bad radio for what it does. There are a lot of higher end features or what I would expect to see in, in a more expensive radio in the gain control, attempting to control bandwidth, the massive frequency spaces that this operates on, uh, and the performance when attached to headphones or an external speaker, pretty good. The main speaker, mm, little a little lacking, but again, the size is that of a pack of cards. So, you know, all right. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the Raddy please post them in the comments below. Appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, you give me a thumbs up. If you have not already, please subscribe and click that bell so you know when I go live or I post another video. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. See ya. Ready, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, ready? You have anything to report, Ratty? You've been you've come up on tax evasion charges. Do you have anything you want to say? Say to the people. I am from China. I don't know why you're trying to charge me American taxes. Get off my back. Thank you. That is all I have to say. No more questions. I said no more questions. I'd rather run all the fast railroads, man. We don't need all these damn folks that have been running no damn government. Shit. Um, Give me a couple of news reporters and yeah, they got no damn sense. You know what? What they need to do is uh, build a great big ass prison right out in the middle of Arizona or Mexico. No, Mexico. Build a great big ass prison in Mexico. You just let them buy a big ass, big ass. Oh, well, he's getting there. Good for you.